Welcome back to Hydrohaven. Today we're diving into what I consider the true foundation of successful gardening, building rich living soil packed with organic matter and humus. After years of transforming my own garden's depleted clay into thriving, productive soil, I've learned that understanding and nurturing soil organic matter isn't just helpful, it's absolutely essential for sustainable garden success. Whether you're dealing with compacted clay, lifeless sand, or something in between, the techniques we'll explore today will help you create soil that not only feeds your plants, but creates an entire underground ecosystem that works tirelessly on your behalf. Before we get our hands dirty with practical techniques, let's clarify what we're actually building. Soil organic matter encompasses all the carbon-based materials in your soil, everything from fresh plant residues to actively decomposing matter to completely decomposed humus. Think of organic matter as the lifeblood of your soil, influencing nearly every aspect of its function. It improves soil structure, increases water retention in sandy soils, enhances drainage in clay, buffers pH, and most importantly creates habitat for beneficial soil organisms. Humus represents the finish line of decomposition, stable organic compounds that resist further breakdown and can persist in soil for decades or even centuries. This dark, crumbly material is what gives rich soil its characteristic earthy smell and spongy texture. While all humus is organic matter, not all organic matter has reached the humus stage. Both are critically important, serving different functions in your soil ecosystem. Fresh organic matter feeds soil life immediately, while humus provides long-term benefits to soil structure and nutrient cycling. In my own garden, I've measured organic matter increases from a dismal 1.5% to over 6% over 7 years of dedicated soil building. The difference in plant health, drought resistance, and overall garden productivity has been nothing short of remarkable. Let's explore how you can achieve similar or better results in your own garden. If there's one practice that has transformed my garden soil more than any other, it's consistent application of high-quality compost. I consider compost the perfect soil amendment. It immediately boosts microbial activity while also contributing to long-term humus formation. When I first started gardening, I made the mistake of using small sporadic applications of compost. Now I understand that meaningful soil improvement requires serious volume. For established gardens, I apply a 1 to 2 inch layer of finished compost across all growing areas annually, typically in fall after the main harvest. This timing allows the compost to integrate with the soil through winter, creating an ideal seedbed by spring. For new beds or severely depleted soil, don't hesitate to incorporate 3 to 4 inches of compost into the top 8 to 10 inches of soil. This initial investment pays dividends for years to come. The quality of your compost matters tremendously. Well-made compost should smell earthy, not sour or ammonia-like. It should be dark brown to black, with a crumbly texture where you can't easily identify the original materials. I found that compost made from diverse inputs, kitchen scraps, yard waste, fallen leaves and small amounts of manure, creates the most balanced and beneficial end product. If purchasing compost, look for OMRI listed products from reputable sources, ideally produced locally. In my experience, spending more on high quality compost is always worth the investment, compared to cheaper products that may contain persistent herbicides or excess salts. If compost is the foundation of my soil building strategy, cover crops are the walls and roof. These remarkable plants build organic matter both above and below the soil surface simultaneously. The visible greenery eventually becomes organic matter when terminated, but it's the extensive root systems that often contribute even more significantly to long-term soil improvement. Some cover crops, particularly grasses like annual ryegrass and cereal rye, can develop root systems extending several feet deep, breaking up compaction and introducing organic matter deep into the soil profile. In my cool climate garden, I've had outstanding results with a fall-planted mix of cereal rye and hairy vetch. The rye establishes quickly, preventing erosion and capturing excess nutrients before winter, while the vetch fixes nitrogen that benefits the following season's crops. For summer cover cropping, buckwheat has become my go-to option, flowering within just 30 days and attracting beneficial insects while suppressing weeds and building remarkable soil structure. The key to maximizing cover crop benefits is proper timing and termination. For maximum organic matter contribution, allow cover crops to develop to early flowering stage before terminating. I typically cut cover crops at the soil surface rather than pulling them, leaving the root systems in place to decompose and create natural channels for water, air, and future plant roots. 
The above ground portion can be left as mulch on the soil surface or lightly incorporated into the top few inches of soil. With consistent cover cropping, I've documented organic matter increases of 0.5 to 1% per year, faster than any other single practice. One of the most transformative shifts in my gardening approach has been the dramatic reduction in tillage. While occasional soil disturbance isn't inherently destructive, frequent rototilling or turning damages soil structure and disrupts the fungal networks that contribute to humus formation. In natural ecosystems, which build remarkable soil with no human intervention, soil disturbance is minimal. Our gardens benefit from following this example. I've transitioned nearly all my growing areas to permanent beds with clearly defined walking paths. This simple organization prevents compaction in growing zones and eliminates the perceived need for deep tillage. When incorporating organic materials, I use a broad fork or garden fork to gently lift and loosen the soil without inverting layers or pulverizing aggregates. For routine planting, a simple hand trowel or dibber is often the only tool needed. This gentler approach preserves mycorrhizal fungi networks, the remarkable underground partners that extend plant root systems and contribute significantly to stable humus formation. These beneficial fungi trade soil nutrients for plant sugars, but they can only perform this essential function when their delicate hyphae remain intact. Each time we aggressively till, we set this natural system back forcing it to rebuild from scratch. By minimizing disturbance, we allow these permanent soil relationships to develop and thrive. Nature builds soil from the top down, with organic materials accumulating on the surface where they're gradually incorporated by soil organisms. My most successful garden beds follow this natural model through strategic mulching. Beyond the familiar benefits of weed suppression and moisture retention, organic mulches continuously feed soil life as they slowly decompose. In my perennial beds, a 3-inch layer of arborist wood chips has created remarkable soil improvement within just two seasons. The fungi-dominated decomposition process gradually transforms these woody materials into stable humus while improving soil structure. In vegetable gardens, I use finer materials like shredded leaves or straw, applying a fresh one to 2-inch layer after each major harvest. The soil-building magic happens at the interface between mulch and soil. This active decomposition zone teems with earthworms, arthropods, and beneficial microbes that gradually incorporate organic matter into the topsoil. To accelerate this process, I occasionally sprinkle a thin layer of finished compost or worm castings between the soil and coarser mulch materials. This compost sandwich approach creates ideal habitat for soil organisms while maximizing the conversion of raw organic matter into valuable humus. The most overlooked soil building strategy leverages plants' remarkable ability to pump carbon directly into the soil. Plants convert atmospheric carbon dioxide into simple sugars through photosynthesis, and up to 40% of these carbon compounds can be exuded through plant roots to feed beneficial soil microbes. In exchange, these microbes make nutrients available to plants and contribute to stable soil aggregates. To maximize this liquid carbon pathway, focus on keeping living roots in your soil as much as possible. In my garden, I've eliminated bare soil periods through succession planting, intercropping, and cover cropping. Even small changes like transplanting the next crop before harvesting the current one ensures continuous root exudates feeding soil life. Certain plants are particularly effective carbon pumpers. Deep-rooted perennials like comfrey, artichokes, and asparagus develop extensive root systems that contribute significantly to soil organic matter. Native prairie plants can be integrated into garden borders, simultaneously building soil while providing habitat for beneficial insects. In vegetable gardens, leaving crop residues like corn stalks or the lower portions of brassica plants to decompose in place adds both surface organic matter and below-ground root carbon. Building truly exceptional soil isn't about single interventions but rather developing an integrated system that consistently builds organic matter while preserving what you've already created. In my own garden this has evolved into a year-round approach. Cover cropping empty beds, mulching actively growing areas, minimal disturbance during planting and harvesting, regular compost applications, and maintaining living roots whenever possible. The results speak for themselves. Beyond measurable increases in organic matter and humus, I've witnessed dramatic improvements in practical garden outcomes. Plants withstand drought longer, disease pressure has decreased, and overall productivity has increased while input costs have declined. 
my soil now requires less irrigation, minimal supplemental fertilization, and actually becomes easier to work with each passing season. Your soil building journey will reflect your unique climate, existing soil conditions, and available resources. Start with practices that seem most accessible, perhaps making quality compost or implementing cover crops, and expand your approach as you witness positive changes. Document your progress through simple observations like soil color, earthworm counts, and plant health. With persistence and the right techniques, even the most challenging soils can be transformed into rich, living, growing environments. If you've found this information valuable, I'd love to hear about your own soil building experiences in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the Hydro Haven channel for more practical garden wisdom and share this video with fellow gardeners who might benefit from these soil building strategies. Here's to growing not just better plants but truly exceptional soil, the foundation of sustainable gardens everywhere.